Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Gilurumo Mohobe. Welcome yet again to another wonderful episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. As always, we bring exciting, new and life-changing content. Today we are going to talk about taxation. Specifically, we are going to talk about transfer duty because I've noted it's a difficult subject for a lot of entrepreneurs. And I brought to the studio an expert in the field uh, who's been here before. And uh, I leave it to him, Mr. Ronnow, to tell the viewer who you are and what you do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mokobe, for hosting me. Um, as you said, my name is Tumelo Ronnow. I'm a tax expert, tax specialist, um, and also an author and also a columnist and a blogger. I have two books, uh, The Farmer's Tax Handbook, which was uh, released recently, and Taxation of Not-for-Profit Organizations. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about transfer duty. Before we go into the 10 crucial points we want to cover, what's the definition of transfer duty? What is it actually? Yes, so uh, basically transfer duty is a tax paid on transfer of property. Uh, you realize I use the word transfer um, mm -hmm. because it's not just on buying. Yes, when you buy, you have to pay transfer duty, but also sometimes it can be given to you as a gift. You still have to pay transfer duty. Sometimes you inherit the property from your parents. You still have to pay transfer duty. So whenever it transfers from one company to other company or from one name to another name, uh, it triggers transfer duty. And tell me what other uh, duties or taxes, or just give me an idea of all the taxes that are payable when you transfer property. You transfer property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other tax that is payable is uh, value-added tax, VAT. Mm -hmm. So you'll either pay VAT or you'll pay transfer duty. This all depends on who you have bought from. So if you have bought from someone who is registered for VAT, when they sell, they'll charge VAT. That means you'll pay VAT and you'll not pay transfer duty. And if you buy from someone who is not registered for VAT, uh, you'll have to pay transfer duty. Okay. So in terms of uh, the tax regime, um, is it every transaction which attracts transfer duty? Uh, in, t in terms of uh, transfers of uh, immovable property, mm. uh, transfer duty becomes payable. Mm. But then there are instances where you will get exemptions. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and we're going to deal with that later. Yes, yes. All right. So who, who is liable to pay transfer duty? Who pays transfer duty? Is it... Um, every company or every individual who transfers property or buys property? Yes. So everyone who property is transferred to will have to pay transfer duty. Mm. Uh, whether you are a company, whether you are a trust, whether you are an individual, whether you are a church, um, you have to pay transfer duty mm. whenever you receive such property. Okay. And who monitors the process to ensure that you pay? Well, it's a self-declaration Thing. Um, the government expects you when yeah, you transfer property and you buy property to go to them and say, I've bought this property from so and so. Mm. So here is the declaration. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Botswana Unified Revenue Services will be responsible for such. Mm. Uh, yes, you might not declare, but they always do audits. And uh, when they come for your company or come for you as an individual to audit you and they realize that you've bought a uh, property, but you didn't declare uh, then yes, they will charge you. And again, can you make it clear who 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 receives it? Uh, who is it payable to? Yes. Is it a particular department, a BRS, or how does it work? Yes. Um, now it it used to be payable to the register of deeds mm. uh, because the register of deeds is the one who deals with the uh, transfer of movable property. 
and it it uh, since last year it was moved to Botswana Unified Revenue Service because the government said no. Um, if you look at our departments at our institutions, who's good at collection of money? Mm -hmm. So they say no. BRS is good at collection of money. It's what they specialize in. So let's move it to uh, Botswana Unified Revenue Services and open a unit mm -hmm. within BES that specifically deals with transfer duty. So that people specifically dedicated to helping people uh, in terms of our transfer duty obligations. Um, and then how, how does it work in practical terms? Do you come to BES to pay first and then you go to your lawyers uh, with a receipt, how does it work? You okay, you start, of course, with uh, with your lawyers uh, in terms of uh, the transfers, and most of the time, best would prefer that they are the ones who come to them and say, "This is the declaration from our client. Uh, they have bought property from so and so. This is the value." Uh, then you will get a clearance letter from them to say, "Okay, no, uh, this property or this person who is selling is not uh, owing any taxes." Mm -hmm. Then they, they give the, uh, the lawyers everything. Uh, then the lawyers can go to the register of this to finalize the property. Or where now it's a property that is managed by the land board. They go to so the So in fact, what you're telling me is that the best prefers to receive checks from a trust account as opposed to just somebody coming direct to coming, pay. Yes, coming directly to pay. Yeah. Uh, because uh, before... Uh, the issue of exemption, you have to get a clearance letter to be, from BES mm -hmm. uh, to say this property is not owing us mm -hmm. any tax before the property can be transferred to the buyer. And how is the figure around, arrived at? How does the, the government determine what transfer duty to pay? Yes. Okay, you'll come to them and say, okay, this is the purchase price. Uh, but also they, they uh, then they say, okay, is you either pay on the higher of the purchase price or the market value. Mm. Yes. So, I mean, they are after collections, they are collecting revenue for the government, so they will always go for the higher price. And most of the time, the market value can be over and above the purchase price. So they will charge a certain percentage on the market value of the property. Correct me if I'm wrong. They also want you to have a valuation from a registered and reputable value. Yes. Mm. Yes. So the market value is, uh, should be determined by someone who is registered uh, according to the Real Estate Professionals mm. Act, because uh, that's the act that uh, governs uh, valuers and anyone who deal with uh, property. Okay, I know that the, the issue of transfer duty has been in the news a lot, as if to suggest there have been recent changes. Can you just yes. summarize what are the recent changes and when did they come into effect? Yes. So just in, in summary, uh, one of the big changes is on exemptions, uh, especially when it comes to first-time homeowners. So if you are a first-time homeowner, an individual, and you buy property, uh, then that property will be exempt from transfer duty. Mm. Uh, another change that is notable is uh, earlier, uh, it fa the Transfer Duty Act favored uh, those who are married in community of property. Mm -hmm. So whenever they did transfers, uh, it will favor them, they will get exemptions. Mm -hmm. But now, regardless of the marriage regime, Mm -hmm. uh, whether you are married in community of property or out of community of property, mm -hmm. if you transfer property to your spouse, you are still get an exemption. And what are the thresholds? Yes. Uh, the other yeah, notable one is that threshold, it was moved from 200,000 to 1 million. Okay. Yes. So Explain if, that to if, the viewer. So what does if, that so mean? So if uh, your property costs uh, 1.2 million, mm. you pay transfer duty on the two an excess of 200,000. And on the first one million, you won't pay anything. Mm. Yeah. So if the property is nine hundred thousand, that means it's less than one million. So no transfer duty payable. Isn't there an issue also of whether, whether or not the the person doing the transfer is a, is a citizen or not a citizen? Yes, there is also an issue of citizen and non-citizen. So if you are a citizen, uh, which uh, when defined as citizen is a natural person then born in Botswana has an old bank mm. and also a company that has major if they, if this company if it's majority owned by citizens fifty one percent or higher, or higher mm. then it qualifies as a citizen. Mm. So those ones will pay at five percent. Mm. Then uh, there will be of course uh, churches and trusts, NGOs uh, anyone that is not a companion is also not a natural person. They also qualify for that 5%. Mm. Then they are non-citizens. 
they now have to pay transfer duty at 30 percent yeah. uh before the, the this this was changed in 2019 also so before that they could pay five percent same as any a property same as a citizen mm-hmm. the only difference was was when it comes to agricultural land mm-hmm. so when it came to agricultural land they were paying at 30 percent so when mm-hmm. you talk of uh, lands in Banda Matenga, it's other banana farms, uh, any farm land or agricultural land, uh, whenever they want to acquire it, mm-hmm. they have to pay 30%. But let me ask you this is this a desirable development? Is it good or bad? What is your view on this change of making foreigners pay 30%, 30%. transfer? Yeah, on every um, transfer. It's, it's, it's been a hot potato. Um, um, we had a back-to-back meetings as tax professionals, mm. uh, business Botswana and the government. There were a lot of engagements and then the government said, no, uh, it ends here. They'll have to pay uh, 30%. Uh, you know that uh, we depend on tourism and we depend on agriculture. Mm. So when it comes to agricultural land, especially in Pandamatenga and tourism, these are high-value lands that uh, even the tax base, when it comes to those is the aggregate rental paid to the land boards or to government. So if it's a 15-year lease, um, the value probably will be 30, between 30 and 45 million. Mm. Because normally it's the per year, they'll pay 2 million to around 2.5 or 3 million. So in those 15 years, that means they'll pay between 30 and 45 million. Mm. So 30% of 45 million is almost one third. So between 10 and 15 million, every time you renew that lease, which means you have to pop out 15 million. Mm. That may scare out investors. Now that we have been talking diversification away from diamonds and we are pushing agriculture, uh, we have now opened uh, an economic zone in Pandamatenga to say we want to now maximize this land and do more farming. Mm. That is obviously going to hurt. uh, It's a special economic zone. Yes, it's a special economic zone. It's going to hurt uh, uh, the foreigners who are doing farming there. Um, when this was still a bill, I had some discussions with uh, the Pandamatenga Panda Farmers Association because they wanted to approach the minister to say uh, this will kill us because it will affect cash, cash flow. As mm-hmm. you know, that agriculture farming is uh, capital intensive. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to transfer duty, having to but pay as professionals, did you take a position as a body mm-hmm. on this change? Well, we did. We tried to advise, but. What uh, was they, the had, they had made their mind mm. that no, it it shouldn't be thirty, thirty percent because it's is the highest in, in the region or, or probably even in the world because normally it's transfer you to be your two percent, four percent, and maybe at the highest eight or ten percent. Mm. Yeah. In the, what in was the political countries. reasoning? What was the justification? It's from obviously government. for them, it's is is the revenue. Um, the, our revenues are. are they not trying to discourage. Uh, transfers to non non citizens. Well, yes, that, that's why they are, they, are, they are trying to discourage. Mm. But um, sometimes you look at the whole picture. Mm. You don't just uh, maybe that should have been reserved for residential lands. Mm. Yes. Because when it comes to high value land, where now we depend on tourism, we depend on agriculture, and it affects that. Mm. So if they go out and because now it's also highly specialized and capital intensive. Yes. So we don't have, not all of us have the money to invest in there. Now it's been a year since this happened, this change happened. Yes. Have you made any observations as to the impact? Well, in terms of... Uh, on the market, in terms of... Uh, in other words, did the things you feared or maybe business was trying to fear become realized? Um, okay, there, ha- there haven't been a, a study a study that has has uh, been carried out, but mm. uh, the Pandamatenga Pandam- Pandam- Farmers Association, yeah. I know, uh, they've been dealing uh, behind doors with mm. the, the wow. ministry and the, the ministers responsible for agriculture to say, uh, this is affecting us. Can mm. you please uh, exempt us or let us come with a solution that will favor everyone? It will favor but government and also favor the farmers. But when this significant change was put into effect, was there any consultation across the board? Is it something that Botswana want? Well, it's, yes, it was put out there. They'll say you had the chance to consult. And yeah, there were also meetings. Um, we pushed for meetings, but they had their positions. Mm. And uh, well, they'll call it consultation, but mm. 
at the end of the day, you have to look at all the, the aspects I think, that I are think, I think even internationally, isn't there a move by governments to try and, and secure the land and try and protect it from foreign ownership and to try and limit foreign ownership? Isn't there an effort like that internationally? Yeah, there, there is. Like, mm. even when you take, for example, uh, the agricultural lands or the tourism lands, you are given that for a particular period. You don't own that forever. Mm. So they could have said, okay, when it comes to tourism or agriculture, agriculture land, mm. it's either we give you a 15 year lease or 16 year lease. So after that 16 years, the, mm. the land will always come back to us. Okay. So you are just holding it there, yes, to promote economic activity, but it will always come back to us. So it won't hurt even if you have the land and invest and build a lodge there because after some time it will come back to us. Then when it comes to a residential land, then you can just come up with a policy to say no, no transfer of land to, to citizens. What did you say about the tax land base, citizens. the tax base coming from transfer duty? Yes. Hmm. So yeah, the, the, for, yeah like, I think I've mentioned like, the tax base for transfer duty is whether it be the purchase price, hmm. the market value, and uh, for leases, mm -hmm. the aggregate. Uh, rent, rental value and it's always the highest so mm. you find that the aggregate uh, rental value like I said it could, could be between 30 million and 45 million mm. yes. so but if you are a citizen and you want to invest uh, in tourism or agriculture you shouldn't be scared because for mm. citizens you'll be favored by exemptions and uh, there's always an, a clause also in the transfer duty that you can also approach the minister to exempt you from okay. transfer duty Do you have an instances. idea as to the extent to which transfer duty contributes to the to the national fiscus or should I say to the national PES or to BURS uh, um, um, bottom line? I think s since it has moved to, to BURS, I think after that first report, that's when we'll have an idea of mm -hmm. how it, it, it contributes. But because of the 30% uh, and because also of, of some of the provisions that are favorable that were removed, um, it will be significant. Uh, mm. One of the provisions that uh, taxpayers will say this is a loophole that we used to use. Uh, though we, we used to, we, have, we prefer the word favorable instead of uh, the other word that uh, taxpayers. Yeah. Yes, we, were, we, were, we don't want to say uh, there is a, what, what is this word? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I, I Adverse. I, I, I remember the word that I, uh, mm. I was, I was a loophole. Yeah, yeah a loophole. Taxpayers, we, prefer the loophole but we yeah. say favorable provisions because it's put there for you to utilize them. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. say it's a loophole, it's more like yeah, it's a negative connotation. It's, yeah, it's a negative connotation. So you could uh, transfer if it's the land is in a company, you could transfer shares and it wouldn't trigger transfer duty. Yeah. So now if you transfer shares, mm. it will still trigger transfer duty because they say remove the day, you are actually selling Mm. the property you are mm. not selling the shares okay. and so they'll say bring the transfer duty but if your company is, is listed mm. uh, you are exempt from transfer duty where there is change of shares because if it's listed that means there's almost change of shares almost every day so yeah that you be. said it's always been the case in Botswana that 30 percent transfer duty is payable on agricultural, agricultural land, land. Um, has there been any change in that or has it remained the same now it's the thirty percent applies to any kind of across the board across the board whether you mm. get agricultural land or whether you so get the same protections that were land. done on on uh, agricultural land are now it goes here okay it goes now to everything do you think indirectly this change is going to encourage foreigners to acquire Botswana citizenship to enable them to benefit yes mm. they, they want to get permanent residence and then afterwards get. Uh, citizenship so mm. that they they can benefit so and maybe that's uh, yeah, not a bad yeah, thing yeah it can it can be of good use yeah to, it can to be us. of benefit yes. to some it can be of benefit to us um you also already you already mentioned how how you get market value on transfer duties based on valuations yes. do you want to say more on that um okay yeah in terms of the, the market value uh, like we said you should approach someone who's registered with them uh, the real estate professionals act so if a real estate agent who's registered yes, who's with REAC. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if they are not uh, registered, mm -hmm. they will reject your market value to say no. 
uh, we don't know that person if they are legit. So mm. we need someone who's qualified and who's approved by the association and also mm. by the act. By the act. Presumably, they want someone who's their member, who's been paying their dues, who's yes. in good and regular who's, standing. Yeah. Who's okay. Good. Because they 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 also want to protect you uh, when you build someone who's not uh, in who's not uh, registered in terms of their uh, membership. Uh, it's difficult for them to help when someone has cheated you. You can't report that person anyway. So it's always good to get I'm someone. I'm sure there have been instances back. where BRS has rejected the valuation, notwithstanding, notwithstanding the fact that you come with the valuation from yes, a registered person. Yes, there, yes, are yes. there are such so instances. So what do you do when your valuation is rejected? Um, that's, okay, the, the first thing is always to try to defend the valuation, come up with the reasons why that valuation or why that. In writing matter. or you go there and talk to them? They always deal in writing. Yeah. Yes. You can do a writing, then talk to them. Mm. Yes, because there has to be a trace, evidence, documentary mm. evidence that you have queried or you object to whatever they say. No, mm. uh, this is our market value. Because there are issues like where forced sales, uh, distress sales, where someone is like in an auction. Say, yeah. Or yeah, is leaving a country or something happened. Uh, they want money quickly. Obviously, they will not sell it. At market value, so that mm. distress sale. Uh, but I know some, some valuers always factor in the distress sales price, mm. but it's not always because most of the time they call it the first sale value. Yes, a first sale value. Mm. But it's not always that you buy at a first sale. But you have to say no. I bought it at this value when I valued. I considered one, two, three. That's why it's valued at one million and not one point two or one one point five. Because if if you don't um, defend it. Mm. Uh, then you might be admitting that you are undervalued. So okay. if you if you are undervalued, they'll say, okay, no, you are undervalued. Yeah. You are charging you twenty thousand dollar penalty. Yeah, for the undervaluation. Have you have you actually challenged the evaluation and successfully? Um, no, not not in in, in recent times. Uh, do you think people have succeeded in challenging the valuation? Well, um. Sometimes most of the we time, have the impression most, that most of the time, people is because people when they think of the tax man, they they think of the tax man as this bad guy who mm. doesn't listen to anyone. But mm. if you come to them and present your facts, mm. and you say these are my facts, then they listen so to you. So your experience is that the tax man is not as tough as people think. Yeah, no, it's it's not tough as people think. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's not tough as people. Think. All right, let's talk about um, another aspect here. At what rate is the duty payable? I think you mentioned the thresholds, yes. but overall the rate is averages to what? Um, Once you get to a million, over a million, is it still 5%? It's, yeah, it's, it's 5% mm. across the board. Mm. So, yeah, so if it's, it's less than 1 million, for example, it's, that's, that means it's zero. You won't, mm. you won't pay anything. So this 5% will apply to individual citizen companies, Mm. Uh, trusts, your NGOs, anything that is not a company or a natural person, yeah, will be taxed at five percent, and then the thirty percent, of course, is for non-citizen. Okay. So the non-citizen also will include a company that is majority owned by mm. non-citizens. So if, for example, uh, a citizen owns forty-nine percent, mm. and the non-citizen owns fifty-one, mm. uh, that means it's a non-citizen company. They don't see it's just only. One percent. What are the exemptions, if any? I, I know that there are certain exemptions where you don't have to pay transfer duty. Yes. Now, like earlier I said uh, you say that you pay VAT mm. or you pay transfer duty. Mm. So, if the, the if you have paid VAT, you are exempt mm. from transfer duty. Mm. Yes. Also, um, if you are receiving property as a donation. And you are a destitute or you are an orphan, you are exempt from transfer duty because they look at the case and say, Look, why is this guy being given a house or a pro? It's because he doesn't have the means. Mm. So why go after them and charge them tax? How do you how do you prove that you are destitute? And, uh, how do you show that you are poor? What yes. do you have to do? Okay, the, the act actually um, references uh, stuff like SOS, uh, Office of the President. Because that, that, that time when it was done, 
Mm -hmm. um, there was your presidential housing appeal, mm -hmm. and uh, it, we also coordinated a lot of issues on offense and destitutes. Mm -hmm. So they will have to assist you, mm -hmm. uh, then you improve uh, also through the Wamabi Peleho. They can help you to say, okay, this we've been helping this person, mm -hmm. they are destitute or they are an orphan. Mm -hmm. and, and you present that. Yeah, that is a very good question because you cannot just go to them and you are offered. Is it they, enough to say that I'm unemployed, uh, I don't have income? No. You have it's, to go it's further. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not you enough. have to have yeah. yourself registered as a destitute. Yeah, you have to have, or, or go to your Gilmabu Peloko to help you facilitate mm. that process. There have to be some evidence mm. that you are a destitute or you are an orphan. Do they have any income-based assessment? I mean, if I'm unemployed it's, for two years, isn't that enough? Not, no. Mm -hmm. The only way you can do it, I, I mentioned that uh, there is a provision where you can approach the minister uh -huh. to exempt you from transfer duty. Yeah. That's your only way out. Okay. Yes. Are there situations where foreigners can be exempted from the rigors of, of this act? Citizens only. Okay. Yes. In other words, even the president can't make an exemption. The president, no. It's, okay. Yeah. All right. I was the legal jargon. It will be ultra bias. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best way to maximize on these exemptions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. A, as an individual, um, <laughs> probably those who are in the the selling of property would not like uh, my advice or my answer. Mm. Yes, because you want to maximize sales. But uh, as an individual, it's either you buy from a bank where it's a sale in execution, uh, because that is not covered uh, in VAT, in the VAT Act. Mm. So that means you, you have avoided VAT. When they sell that house or that property, they're not supposed to charge VAT. Mm. I know there have been contentions at best, uh, but uh, there was a case at Court of Appeal, mm. and the judge said, no, the act is clear, a saving execution uh, doesn't fall within the ambit of VAT. Mm. So do not charge that if you are a bank when you sell such property. Uh, we call it goods in possession mm -hmm. uh, in the tax language because yeah, the bank would have uh, taken the goods from you because you have failed to pay it. Yes, so when you have avoided VAT, then you now go to transfer duty and, and look at the exemptions that are available for you in transfer duty. Can you escape and both? Maximum. Yes, yes. It's possible to avoid both. It's, it's a, yes. How do you As do a, that? A, yes, it's possible to avoid both. Mm. Because, yeah, if it's a post mm. um, sale okay. or by, by the bank, they don't so touch VAT. It seems VAT. to me that it might work out to be better or more efficacious to dispose of a property in an auction as opposed to a private sale? Um, well, an, an auction is not necessarily a sale and execution. Yeah, I, mean, execution. I mean an auction yeah, like that. Yes, an auction like that. Consequence yes. to a judgment. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's where now individuals will, will benefit. Yeah. Uh, because uh, VAT will always get priority over transfer duty. Mm. So you want to avoid VAT first mm. before you can go to transfer duty. If you, mm. I, I buy from someone who's in sale of business, obviously I, I'll not pay transfer duty, mm. I'll pay VAT, but VAT is 12%, um, while transfer duty is 5%. So I have to beat the higher one first before, before I can go to to the to the lower one. I, I know that there are some taxpayers um, who have been asked to pay both. Mm. I think it's, it was just because of understanding that at that point, Transfer Duty Act was has, has just been changed and they thought we have, you should charge both. But the act strictly says is either you pay VAT or you pay... Mm. Yeah. Or if I you... I think paying if, both if, would, be, would be unfair yeah, and unconscionable. It, it, yeah, it, it would be unfair. Yeah, so we, we, can, we can pay nothing. Or maybe also you can just uh, buy from a company or individual who's not registered for VAT. If can you a buy business, from myself, can a business recover yes. recover the transfer duty? Yes. If how I think the businesses, especially if they are citizen owned, mm. essentially they won't pay transfer duty or they won't pay VAT because VAT they'll go claim it in their return. Mm. The VAT return if they are registered. Yeah. 
especially if you are registered for, for mm. VAT, you would go claim that VAT after you've paid it. So consequently, it has come back into your pockets. Mm. Yes. Then if so you it's have, a way of recovering. Have, yeah, so it's a mm. way of, of recovering. If mm. you have paid transfer duty, um, they also allow that as input that for VAT purposes. Yeah. So you are recovering uh, back that. So talk to duty. entrepreneurs out there who may be confused about the subject. Yes. What is your overall message about transfer duty to entrepreneurs and business people? Yes. Uh, yes, as business people, as entrepreneurs, always ensure that when you get interest transaction, um, you consult uh, with a specialist. Mm. Uh, for yeah, for obviously for property, you will, you will involve someone who's in the property business. Mm. But when it comes to taxes, see someone who does taxes so that they can advise you on. Uh, the best way to maximize uh, mm. those exemptions mm. because if you don't have someone you will pay when you're not supposed to to pay always see a specialist uh, okay. so that you run your business efficiently okay i'd like you to look at the camera mr run now and yes. just talk to the viewer and just give them a party message about transfer duty its efficacy its importance and then give them one or two words of encouragement on the subject. Yes. Um, Texas help us build hospitals. Um, they help us build roads. Um, they, help, uh, they help the government fund everything that they give to us. So ensure that uh, whenever transfer duty is payable and you are supposed to pay it, you pay it. And where the exemptions, maximize them because they are there to benefit you. They are not loopholes. Uh, it wasn't a mistake that they are there make sure you use them so that you won't be burdened with paying something that you shouldn't have paid and like i always say consult with specialists uh you should have a specialist either internally or externally whether it's tax business wise any other specialist that you may need in your business ensure that you involve them to so that your business can run efficiently uh in parting i'll say always follow uh, Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom <laughs> and uh, ensure that you subscribe uh, on YouTube and you also follow him on all social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook. Yeah, and thank you for having me. One question before you go, how do we tell the, these experts? Is there a way of, of determining quickly whether this expert is worthwhile to the point of entrusting yourself to them? Is, you can always ask for references mm -hmm. or recommendations oh i see okay yes. from people yes. like you and from even brs yes okay now um it remains for me to thank you sir for coming thank you but before we part tell the viewer how they can access you on which platforms are you available and what are your contact details yes um they can uh, search for tumela run now on facebook on linkedin on twitter and even on youtube or search for the text platform, uh, still on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and even on WordPress. Tell uh, them about the your, book. your two, two books, right? Yes, they can contact me on 7387-4566 uh, to get the book. Um, a farmer's tax handbook goes for 150, and the taxation of not-for-profit organizations goes for 250. And in these books, you go into greater detail about yes, these matters? about these matters. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. So you, uh, both books have uh, transfer duty elements in there. Oh, okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Let me thank you. Please thank uh, you, respond to our invitation. This subject okay. of uh, transfer duty is one that is troubling a lot of people. Yes. And I'm glad that you availed your, yourself to come and clarify it for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.